Well, it's time on the show now for me to introduce my special guest for this week, and it is Roland Grepau from, of course, Master Plan. Welcome to Rock Posers Roulette. Hello, nice to meet you. Real pleasure to have you on the show. Um, I must admit, I have got a bit of a soft spot for the band, uh, a bit of a fan, and it's great that you've got a new album out. Um, I, I have played it uh, several times, I think would be an understatement. <laughs> okay, thanks, man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Well, it's, uh, I mean, for those of you who are not um, overly familiar with Master Plan, I suppose if you're going to put them in a, in a bracket, I mean which I don't particularly like doing with band, but maybe uh, symphonic metal or what What direction would you say the band is for those of, uh, people who are not overly familiar with your music? Uh, <clears throat> to be honest, it's a bit difficult for me as well because I'm, I'm just a fan of, of my own band, you know, and uh, I always saw it uh, as, a, as a kind of um, melting pot from all my favorite bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, and still with a little approach of kind of modern guitar stuff tuning wise or arrangement. And I think it's just very melodic, nice and uh, very balanced and every more really in every direction. And we have a, also a lot of little prog parts, you know, little progressive parts. And um, for my my kind of view, I, I always want to arrange the songs in a way that everybody can understand it and not get that it's not getting on the nerves, even when you have some progressive part, you know. And uh, I think it's just a clever kind of uh, arrangement of this kind of certain style we created. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm really happy that we have a, or found a little niche, you know. Indeed, I mean, some people do get really sort of hung up as soon as they hear the word progressive, it, like they automatically sort of switch the brain off. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. You know, I like it. You know, but uh, when I when I hear bands which are really famous in that direction, like Symphony X or Dream Theater, you know, I love all these bands from the past, but I'm not listening to them anymore. But when I have little elements or pieces, you know, clever clever arrange in a song, which is normally you know we have also very easy stuff sometimes, like like uh, classic riffs, you know, like could be like Priest or or old Priest kind of stuff or. But, you know, it's always a little bit in a package, you know, from from uh, melodic metal to hard rock, everything is inside. So and um, like I said, the, the progressive part is very clever, just a little part of the master plan style. Well, bouncing back um, into the past uh, just briefly, I mean, I'm a fan of your playing for many years, going back to obviously your days in Halloween. Um, it's got to be said, what, one of the albums of theirs which a lot of people have not heard was Mesh with Jukebox, which I absolutely adore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of, uh, yeah, uh, you know, like a special album we made just uh, with our heroes covering, you know, we have a lot of, lot of great stuff. I don't even remember all the songs we did. <laughs> well, the David Bowie cover that you did, I mean, I've played on the show one or two times because, um, it's, it's one of the things I've brought up to people when when you talk about cover versions and there are certain things I think the cover version is almost better than the original and in that case in the case of um, that particular album I would say that uh, the Halloween version is I'll probably get stoned for this is is, is better than, than the original I, I prefer it yeah maybe maybe that's why we choose uh, this kind of songs because then uh, we thought we can make it better because some some of the songs doesn't make sense to cover at all because they're so great and uh, Sometimes it doesn't make sense, you know, it's, it's just a, a bad kind of version you're creating, you know, like like some stuff you should never do. But I think we choose a couple of versions or songs which we thought has the potential that we can make it more in a metal way better, you know, because most of the stuff was from like hard rock or from the 70s, 60s. And uh, I thought we it's, it's pretty cool to have some, you know, double bass drumming and some more screaming on it and more crazy guitar work on it. So that's, that's I thought, is, is the best way to make a song better. Because it all helps, but you, you get an understanding probably of the influences that you've brought into the bands that you've been in um, from listening to that. Um, obviously, because you're not going to do a cover version of, a, of a, a song you absolutely hate. I hate something. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, you, you wouldn't be doing a cover version no, of a song no. that you hate. No, I mean, sometimes you have to make, a, let's say, a compromise because some members love stuff, which I didn't like, you know, especially in Halloween. So we had a kind of different taste, you know, and I, I think maybe some people hate me for this, but I was never a big Kiss fan. And then 
three or four guys in the band loved Kiss, and I, I said, "Oh fuck, you know, <laughs> I didn't like it from that, you know." <laughs> I, I, I am well known for for my opinion, and normally go, going against what everybody else likes. I, I have I have absolutely no shame in this department whatsoever. <laughs> So, Going, jumping forward, obviously, to the new album, um, I was really pleased to see, um, obviously, Rick um, uh, being the vocalist on this album. Uh, again, uh, uh, another gentleman I'm a fan of, because um, I, I love his work on, uh, obviously, uh, Magnus' Freefall album as well. Mm -hmm. And I think he's really slotted into the band well. I think it was uh, very nice, I mean, uh, that... Uh... Rick and I, we had already long time contact, like seven years. And right. He contacted me um, like around the MK2 um, tour with uh, we supported Saxon, and then uh, he wrote me at that time and telling me he's a big fan of the band. Of course, he, he loves uh, Jorn as a singer or a former singer a lot. And uh, so I was always in contact uh, and I checked him out as a singer as well. But I thought, nah, he's great, but not not so close so far, you know. But uh, so it took a while, and I realized last year when I heard him again after many years, not not really paying you know attention, that I thought, man, this this guy is getting better every year. And last last year when I heard the new uh, album or the video I saw in single from from Advance. Mm. I really loved his voice so much that I thought, now I have to give him a chance. I want to check him out. And, and he was incredible great. You know, I just sent him a song, like our typical test song of Master Plan we always used for checking all the singers we had in the last uh, yeah, eight years, ten years. And um, the song was recorded on the Aeronautics album, on the second album we did. And it was a bonus track. And Killing in Time was the na name of the song, and uh, we had an instrumental version. One was Jorn singing, so it was always good to, to you know, for testing. Sure. And, sure. and Rick just sent it after three hours back, and uh, I even thought this was a better version than the original singer before. And this is, uh, I told him, why are you not keeping your time? You can sing the whole weekend, but he did it just in three hours, so that means he he made it quick, and it was fantastic, you know. And uh, so I think. He was developing in himself. A lot of people doesn't know he's a singer, of course, and uh, but he started as a bass player in in, in, in his career. So, oh right. Yeah. So I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So he told me this, and uh, he told me the story. He just started, let's say, maybe from now on, it's twelve years ago, something like that. He started singing. So <laughs> that's uh, that's funny. So. You know that that he he he's still developing in his age. You know he's not the youngest guy anymore, but he gets better and better. That, that's that's. Uh, oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, so that's that's what I mean. You know, when somebody starts with fifteen or twelve, and and then of course you you you're reaching the peak after twenty years. You know, something like that. But he's still fresh in his kind of uh, potential. You know, that's that's what I like so much. I mean, I think he absolutely nails in this album. I mean, my probably my favorite two tracks off the album. Um, would be uh, Keep Your Dream Alive and Return From Avalon. They're probably the two that I, I've gone back and sort of replayed several times. Uh, although, I mean, I, I do really, really like the album overall anyway. It is, it, it, it probably hits my personal musical taste, uh, even though I've got a very eclectic taste, right on the head. I mean, it's, um, I was intrigued to see what it's going to be like, obviously, without Jordan on vocals, but I say Rick absolutely nails it. Yeah, that's nice to hear because everybody's picking different songs, you know, so it's sometimes... Uh, especially band members, when Five Guys says this is our favorite song, I'm I'm just surprised that not not nobody else is mentioning it, you know. So, but it's nice that uh, you like Return from Avalon. I mean, Keep Your Dream Alive is definitely our single and video, which uh, um, was on purpose for me the most catchiest song, and uh, we always like to do it. Uh, you know, we did also Lost and Gone some years ago. And it's the most most kind of you know not not so typical metal song, but I like it somehow to to come out with the first song like this, you know. But uh, Return from Avalon, I'm, I'm really surprised because some people say it's, it's one of the weakest songs of, of the album, and I love it because I wrote it, you know. Well, there you go. There's another example of me <laughs> not, <laughs> not following the taste of others. <laughs> no, but uh, I think it's for everybody. It's, it's something, you know, on. And a uh, good friend of mine, I mean, he's a big supporter of Masterplan. He's writing me all the time. He's very funny. And... He picked out one song, the only song he didn't like was uh, Black Knight of Magic. He said, that's the only song I don't like. And most of the people love this song, you know. So so it's really funny to see the taste is always different, but it doesn't matter. I mean, 
if we if we have uh, average count of ninety percent of the songs which people like, then it's fine. <laughs> but I mean, it, it it does change. I mean, it, it's easy just to uh, probably pick a favorite track the first time you hear it. Um, there'll be a certain rift or what have you will catch you. Think that's the one. But mm -hmm. but you, you know, I I it, it's what one of the other presenters on Firebrand um, said it on his show. Um, we are very guilty um, at jumping through tracks when we get sent albums and not spending the proper time listening to them. Yeah. Um, and you've got to give an album a chance to breathe. I think. Um, I mean, I say I've probably played this album now probably six or seven times, and it it's just growing and growing all the time. Um, so maybe maybe my choice in, in probably two or three weeks might which my two favorite tracks might even change but <laughs> we, yeah, we, it's we, possible because most most of the time the the first tracks you really love the most are you know sometimes you get a little bit how you say you know you more into songs which are still growing or something like that you know which, which has maybe a little deeper kind of impact or, or feeling or melody which you don't understand in the beginning so much but but it's the same when I was a fan, you know, my, my old band, which I grew up. That's the reason why I started making music, is Grand Funk Railroad. Oh, right. And, yeah, and I love this band, and uh, a lot of people hating them, you know, especially uh, Richie Blackmore hated Grand Funk. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Richie as well, but that's that's a different story. But, you know, they had uh, Grand Funk had also, most of the time, a single or, you know, and I was a fan, and uh, I loved every song to be honest, you know, I was a real fan and I'm still, you know, maybe a real fan. But then when they brought this uh, cover song, uh, The Luck Emotion out, you know, mm. everybody's doing a brand new dance now. I thought, what the? <laughs> 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 I thought, that's a bit too cheesy. Come on, this is not rock. It's not, um, yeah, metal wasn't so much at that time anyway, but uh, but I still liked it as well. But of course, after a while, I couldn't hear the song anymore. So I'm just skipping it now, you know, it's, it's too... Too cheesy, too poppy, you know. <laughs> or you're not drunk enough, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, you know, it, it, it's cool because these guys kept coming from wherever, from the 50s, growing up in the 50s. Mm. There was a big hit there, and uh, and uh, they just had a warming up, uh, let's say, um, uh, like a session to, to, to warm up before they starting even recording. And uh, that's what I was reading in the interview. And uh, Mark Fauna and the guys, uh, you know, they, they, they were singing it and just making the harmonies and the choirs and just for warming up. And then the producer, Todd Rundgren, said, oh, that's a fucking cool version. Let's do it, man. And then it went number one in America. Imagine that. Uh, uh, that must have been a bit of a surprise to them. Yeah. yeah. But I that, think that's, that's probably the good, you know, that, that's a good way of, of, a, of a band, you know, coming out with something. Uh, yeah. It's a danger that you're going to try too hard. And sometimes, you know, just, just relax and just, you know, chill out. And then suddenly, voila, something happens. Yeah, I think that's that's anyway the best, you know, because when you try and you're analyzing stuff and you want to have success with, and you think you have the chemistry, the, the right song written or whatever, I think it never works really, you know, it's, it's just, um, even this new album, Novum Nitium, was totally relaxed because we didn't expect anything. We thought we have still the same lineup when we wrote the songs, you know, and then we found out, uh, so we need a new singer, we need a new bass player and a drummer. And uh, then I thought, well, the, the, the new impact of the new members and the energy, you know, so everything was getting more into the direction, not not of copying the song material, but from the energy to the from the first album we did, you know, because we had totally freedom because we didn't know what to do. We just wanted to cr create a, a strong album and we wanted to survive in the business because after the throwing out situation of Halloween, Mm. Uli, Uli and I, we just thought, let's do a really great album, but we didn't know which direction, which which kind of sound, because we were coming from Halloween, we didn't want to copy them, we wanted to make a, the next step, the next level. And, and you, you're always going to be under the magnifying glass as well, when you're leaving such a high profile band, people are yeah. going to see, you know, what's he going to do? You know, it's almost like some people, unfortunately, almost want you to fail at that point. Oh, definitely, definitely. A lot of people didn't didn't trust anything, you know. I, I really thought we we're nearly out of the business when we went out. I mean, I was just a guitar player, not the main guy in Halloween and the drummer, you know. So, 
So it's it's not not really even even ten twelve years ago it was not something which gives gives you automatically success when you're coming back with a different lineup and different name different song material, and to be honest, a lot of songs on the first album which everybody loves so much, uh, you know, is was uh, even written in Halloween. So like m minimum four or five songs, and they they never liked it, so we didn't use it. <laughs> so so you see the. The quality doesn't have anything to do because it didn't fit the concept before. That's why. But I mean, you've released, you know, eight. There's been eight releases over the eleven years. I mean, it's uh, you. You certainly haven't hung about getting new material out on a regular basis. Definitely. I mean, uh, you know, I have always had big breaks between the releases, so I'm going back to my studio work here in Slovakia, where I live, and uh, recording younger bands, mixing albums. You know, my big biggest idol in that kind of thing is uh, Andy Sneep. So he's he's uh, producing or co-producing. He he did the first uh, one and a half album of Master Plan because in the middle of the second he said I can't do it alone. <laughs> so and uh, so he was teaching me a lot, you know. He, I'm, I'm always able to go to England and um, to meet him every one and a half year and it's such a great um, you know honor for me that he's inviting me as well, you know. So he, we, we, we kept just a friendship and I'm still happy when I see him. Last time I saw him in Belgium, uh, next time I see him on Friday and, and uh, Barling in Germany, on the, we play on the same festival. He's playing with Hell and we with Masterplan, of course. And it's always great, you know, and uh, so I lost it. So what was the question? <laughs> well, I was going to say, I'm, um, just hearing what you're saying there, obviously uh, the studio work that you're doing, I mean, um, are, there, are there many uh, really good young bands coming out um, from Slovakia now? Um, I think my favorite two bands I'm working, uh, I'm, I'm working already on the second album of, of a band from Czech Republic, which are my neighbors here, or our neighbors, and um, this band called Sebastian, and this band, I call it like the little uh, Eastern Avantasia project, because they had so many guest musicians on the, on the first album. And uh, I really like it, so it's very melodic, it, it has a really great songwriting, you know, writing, and uh, the new album I just... Uh, we continue next next month uh, with the vocals. The rest is recorded already. This next album will be really good. So I'm really happy, and I'm I'm now able with my mixing and, and mastering, you know, abilities, uh, which uh, needed some years. But the first album sounded good. But I think this one will be killer. And uh, we have a special guest on the new album, which is also from England, and he played in the band uh, something with Sabbath. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say it, but. <laughs> I, 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 I am intrigued. I mean, it. Um, I, I must check. Must check them out. Uh, I, I do have a, um, a very large uh, penchant for European bands. I mean, it's. I, I do sort of uh, spread my wings somewhat. I mean, there's a there's yeah, a Yugoslavian band which I was a huge fan of, who um, a lot of people have never heard of, called Wild Strawberries, um, which I happened to bump into their manager at, um, funny enough, at, after a, a, a gig by Bright and Rock, and he couldn't believe that somebody in England actually heard of the band. I said, yeah. I, said <laughs> I, I picked the album. I can't remember where I picked it up. Some some small record store somewhere. And I just like the look of it. I thought, I'll, I'll give it a okay. go. And it's absolutely killer. I mean, I don't. Uh, uh, does, uh, Sebastian, are they uh, singing um, in English or are they. Um, yeah, 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 they're singing in English. Not that that's a problem to me because that, that, that doesn't. Um, I, I don't. I'm not one of these people who goes, oh, if they don't, they don't sing in English, then I'm not interested because uh, yeah. I think you, you, you've got a tendency to miss out on some great music. Yeah, yeah. I, I also did one band from Czech Republic and they were always singing in English. And the last album I did. They started getting back to this uh, Czech kind of language, and I thought, "Why are you doing this? You know, you're just limited to to your own country, kind of, you know, um, you know, fan base." And um, they're really great. So, but you know, sometimes people are a bit strange. They thought it's better to to go back to their own kind of language. So I would never go back to to sing Masterplan with German lyrics or something. You know, it's not not that cool. <laughs> but, uh, you should check out uh, Sebastian. There will be I, I I will indeed. Yeah, you'll have to send me over a link or what have you, and I'll, I'll have to check them out and yes. uh, and get them on the show. And we're going also on tour together. So they're supporting Master Plan on on the next tour in October, and uh, so just uh, half of the tour because they don't have the money to. In, they have normal jobs still and everything. So, but it's a good start. And they did also a little tour, uh, I think uh, last year was um, Circle to Circle. 
Oh, did, were they with them? Oh, wow. That, that must have been a hell of a tour for them to get on as well. Yeah, yeah. And we toured to, with them long, long ago, yeah. 2005, we did a tour. Well, I've got to say, I mean, touring, I, just just the costs alone, I mean, it, it's, a, it's something that is that comes up time and again in when I'm chatting to people on the show is that, um, you know, a lot of people, they do have to do a normal job, you know, it's and do their touring as well, because otherwise they, they just couldn't afford to do it. It's getting difficult. I, I tell you, the, the music business is definitely changing the last years, you know. I didn't realize it so much because I didn't tour with Masterplan uh, for seven years now. But now now we have a singer and or a bass player. Everybody has jobs, you know, side jobs. Or, you know, I'm the only guy and the keyboard player, Axel. So we're living from our studio, from the from, from Masterplan, more or less, you know. But, but the other guys still have jobs. And uh, so it's, it's difficult to get holiday. Uh, to be honest, our singer is now on holiday in, in Hungary with his wife and his kids. And he's coming in two days to, to Vienna Airport and we're flying to, together to the festival. So it's, it's a kind of, you know, in the middle of his holiday, he has to make uh, two shows, you know, and, and then he's going back. I was going to say, he can't exactly miss Bang Your Head Festival because he, be, <laughs> he would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, for, for Masterplan, it's still a good situation that we can go on a smaller tour so far after such a long break and with a new lineup. And uh, it looks good that we're even making some money to survive. So it, 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 it doesn't make sense when you make minus all the time, you know. So, of no. course. But, of course, these support uh, slots or positions are always difficult, you know, they, they're not getting anything except, you know, saying, okay, let's do it, and we, we get maybe more famous in a way or recognized, you know, somehow, which is good, you know, but uh, I'm too old for that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, except it's KISS, then I would support KISS. <laughs> Because they're big. <laughs> well, Roland, thank you very much for uh, taking up time to speak to me. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Um, for those of you who've not bought the album yet, um, do go and grab a copy. Um, you will not be disappointed. As you know, I do not play music on this show unless I like it. And um, being a big Master Plan fan and obviously the other material that you've done, all I can say is um, well done for the success that you've had. And here's to bigger and better things. Thank you very much, Dan, and uh, thanks for your support. And um, I was, it was a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you very much, Ryland. Okay. Cheers now. Cheers. Bye.